In this video, we're going to be showing you how you can connect to your Raspberry Pi from another device, such as another computer, tablet, or phone. One way you can do this is by SSHing into your Raspberry Pi from a shell on another computer. But that's another video. There should be a pop-up or a link in the description for that video. But today, we're going to be using VNC, which is free by the way, to do all this cool stuff. At the end of this video, you'll get the opportunity to learn a lot of networking goodies and how internet packets are sent around the internet. That sure is a lot of Raspberry Pis. Thanks to VNC, we can view and operate the desktop of all of these Raspberry Pis with just one device. If you have got a monitor attached to your Pi, then VNC will be as just as useful. Regardless of whether or not you've got a monitor connected up to your Pi, you can still connect to your Raspberry Pi remotely. Let's start with the server, which in our case is the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to start by enabling VNC. If you have access to the desktop environment already, you can do it like this. Preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, interfaces, and then VNC, we enable. But we're not going to do this. We're going to enable VNC via the shell. So we're going to start by opening the shell by clicking on this icon here. Okay, now to enable VNC via the shell, we need to type in sudo, which just means super user do, but we'll describe this in more detail in future videos. Raspi, raspi, dash, con, fig, enter. Whoa, okay. So you need to go down and select um, interfacing options, enter. And then VNC, would you like VNC server to be enabled? Yes, enter. VNC server is enabled. So we've enabled VNC on the shell. Press OK and finish. You can do what we've just done in the shell here by enabling VNC on a separate computer by SSHing to your Raspberry Pi. But we've done a video showing you guys how to do that and that video is how to set up your Raspberry Pi headless. OK, so now let's deal with the client. What do you do for the other device that you're wanting to use to connect to your Raspberry Pi? Well, we need to download an application called VNC Viewer. Now, on my iPad, my tablet here, you can download an app called VNC Viewer, and this is the one that I used. Um, but you can also download it on a desktop computer like this. Um, so if we scroll along, the VNC Viewer there, and we can use that. And I just downloaded that onto our Mac. You can also download the same app onto your smartphone, like I've done here. Now, I'm going to be using my tablet, and um, so I've got the app here, so I'm going to open it. And to connect to my little sister's computer, you have to press this add, add here, and then you have to put the IP address of the computer you want to connect to. In this case, it's my little sister's Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to show you how you find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi computer. The IP address of your Raspberry Pi, in essence, is where your Raspberry Pi lives. Now, there are multiple ways we can get hold of the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, one of which is if you do IP and then root. As you can probably see here, it's given us two different IP addresses. You can see it's got the one that ends in 18 and the one that ends in 12. Now, if you look along here, this ETH stands for Ethernet and this stands for WLAN. Well, that was stupid of me. It actually stands for Wireless Local Area Network. So that's just the wireless network and this is just the wired network. And so this IP address is the IP address of the wired, if you bring the camera over here, here, the wired network. And then this IP address here is the IP address of the wireless. Another way we can get hold of the IP address is if you do this, if config. Whoa, okay, let's decode some of this. So you can see we have um, three things here and they all have an IP address, here, here, and here. Now here, as you can probably remember from earlier, is the ethernet, and this is the IP address of the wired network down here. Now the next one is LO. Now that's just like the loopback interface, and this is the IP address of the loopback interface. The next one is the one that we're going to be using, which is the WLAN wireless network. This is the IP address of that, and this is the IP address we're going to use. We've got VNC open, so now let's type in the IP address. Now, ironically, our router has had, a, we've had a little bit of a problem with our router. So now my um, sister's Raspberry Pi IP address has changed from ending in 12 to 11. So let's just put that in. I'm going to enter the name as SysPi, because it's my little sister's Pi. And then save. 
and connect. Now the username is Pi and we haven't changed the password yet so it is Raspberry. Right, this looks so cool. I've just stolen my brother's space. So you can see I can move the mouse around, which is pretty snowy, and I can go here. And let's go games. I want to go cabin. Whoa, this is so cool. I'll just quickly show you guys um, me doing the VNC viewer on um, my Mac and also then on my phone. So VNC viewer, I'm going to launch that. It's a bit larger so you guys can all see it. So in the top here, I've got to type in the IP address, which was 192.168.1.1. One, two, enter. Okay, username is Pi. Um, your username and password will probably be different. Um, very, um, enter. Okay, there we go. So we're on her Raspberry yeah. Pi. Yeah, we are. She's on, she's playing Minecraft at the moment. Um, and so we can obviously do all this stuff on her Raspberry Pi if we want to. Sorry. You don't have to have someone currently on the desktop of your Raspberry Pi to be able to do this. You can connect to it with no one on the desktop of your Raspberry Pi and it'll still work. This is actually the main purpose of it as well. Now finally, I'm going to show you how you can do it on a phone. So here, you've got to press the plus here. Go. And there we go, we're on her Raspberry Pi, on her Minecraft, and do everything on a phone. If you've seen our previous video where we set up my little Citus Raspberry Pi headless, then you'll probably remember that instead of using the IP address, we may be able to use raspberrypi.local instead. Let's try that. So save, connect, connecting, continue. Um, username is pi and we've not changed our password. So it's raspberry, let's continue. So that does work. RaspberryPi.local does work. Why is it RaspberryPi.local? Well, Raspberry Pi is my hostname, and I can see that by typing in hostname here and enter, and you can see Raspberry Pi is my hostname. You can change your hostname. So if your hostname was banana, then you'd be doing banana.local. At the moment, VNC is only going to work on two computers in the same no local network. Let me explain to you why. This area here, circled in orange, is our local area network, LAN for short. In the centre, we have our router, and its job is to share the internet connection with all of the devices connected to it, and allow all of these devices to talk to each other. It's called the router because it's routing all the data. Our router supports both wired and wireless connections, so I've just drawn some wired connections here and some wireless connections there. Remember, our Raspberry Pi had two IP addresses. The reason for that is because there was one wireless connection and one wired connection. Remember, ETH and WLAN. All of these devices on the local network have local IP addresses. IP addresses that begin with 192.168 and then dot a number between 0 and 255, dot another number between 0 and 255, are reserved for private networks, like our local one here. There are no IP addresses on the internet that begin with 192.168. If this device wants to speak with this device over here, in our example it's a Raspberry Pi, then it will have to send the IP address of where the Raspberry Pi is to the router so that the router can direct his message to the Raspberry Pi. Then if the Raspberry Pi wants to send information back and wants to talk back to um, our device, it can via the router. And so we can connect the conversation between these two devices via the router. What if this guy here wants to speak to this guy over here who's miles and miles away and not on the local network? Well, a similar thing happens. This guy asks the router if he can talk to this guy with this IP address. The router knows that the IP address doesn't begin with 192.168, so it has to go via the internet. Then the internet does its thing and sends the information to this guy. The router added a number to the information that it sent out, and it also remembered that number. When the data gets to this guy down here, it has the IP address of the router and the number that the router made up. Now, when this guy sends his reply, he can send his reply to that IP address of the router and that special number. When the router gets this guy's reply, how does it know which um, device to send it to on the local network? The router then goes, who did I make that number up for? 
Well, it knows that it was this guy it made the number for, so it sends that information to this guy. So all the time, the router is sending out information to the internet and receiving in information from the internet. The stuff that it sends are called packets. The router is constantly sending out packets and making up numbers to attach to those packets, but it also remembers those numbers as well, so that when it gets a reply packet, it can match those numbers up and then send them to the correct device in the local network. So if you've got the client here and the server here, you're fine. We can VNC over the internet. The problem occurs when this guy wants to VNC to this guy. So if this guy tries to connect to this guy's local IP address, it's not going to go anywhere because it's not even going to get to the internet because those IP addresses are reserved for local networks. So it's just going to look around for someone on his local network. If he uses the IP address here of your router, then at least he's going to go through the internet and get to your router. But when the packets get to your router, your router's not going to know which of these guys to send it to. There are a few ways around this problem. One way around this is to set up your router to send those VNC packets to just one of these devices. Let's just pick this guy, for example. That fixes the problem, but you can only get incoming VNC for only this guy. There's another way around that problem too, but I think this is getting into another video, which will We'll do too. But I hope this has given you a good insight into what's going on. You've heard the words client and server mentioned quite a lot without any explanation. This comes up quite a lot in computing. Here's a 45 second rundown. A server, in our case, is going to be your Raspberry Pi and the client is going to be the other device. The client asks the server for something and then the server gives the client what the client asks for. We can just think of it as if you're in like a shop or something and the client is the person with the money asking for let's say a burger and then the server goes and gets the burger and gives it to the client and then the client's nice and happy. Now this actually is what happens down here so if you type into a web browser, um, the website you want to go to, so example.com I've just done here, that is the client, and then it goes to um, the cloud, and then it goes to the web server. The server gets what the client asks for, and then gives it back to the client. So in this case, it will probably just be a web page. We're going to play a prank on my sister. Now, my mum and dad have just taken her out on a walk, um, a nighttime walk, and so when she comes back, hopefully, we can prank her by controlling it. So we've hidden a camera in here. That was actually my brother's idea. Do you want to come here? Okay, let's see if this works. Disclaimer, it doesn't. Okay, she's on here. Ready? Okay. It's, it's recording. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and now you look at what I'm doing. <laughs> well, that went well. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.